Time for the latest installment. Martin and Marlo back after a, we had a bye week. Charlie, last week was sort of a bye week. I explained to folks it was supposed to be the reconnecting of you, me, and Kenny, the famous Kenny Wallace from Tuesdays with Kenny, but you were getting your, your truck repaired. And I think people look at Charlie Marlowe, the dapper sportsman on Fox 2, and I don't think they see you as a truck guy. Is that a, is that a misread? Well, I had never had a truck until a year ago, so I guess that's fair. But I think that also speaks to the stereotypes, and they can be negative and positive, about trucks. And I'll tell you what, I've always had Jeeps. Where I grew up, where I lived, Toledo, Ohio, and then living in Michigan for several years, I always wanted to have a four-wheel drive vehicle for when the, the winters come. But now that I have a truck, I'm telling you, you can always use a truck. There's just, there's about one thing every month that you're glad at least you have a truck to move stuff. Plus I'm doing all the rental property stuff. I'm always trying to move something here. I might go, I might go move a mattress, Martin, even sometimes. I was going to say, I had some mattresses to move and I was thinking of, there's, there's Martin and Marlo, there's Marlo management, and then there's Marlo mattress moving. So it's all about, it's all about alliteration. Yeah. I think there is, you know, and the pickup truck, I think, is because of the country singing, right? That they always got my pickup truck, my bush beer. And I think that they have cultivated that audience, even though in recent years, and I think Frank Cusimano always said this, his son was in high school. And he said, all right, you're turning 16, you know, what kind of car? And the kid said, we all want trucks, Dad. Every, maybe it's a marketing thing. Maybe it's practicality, like you mentioned, having to move stuff. My father-in-law, they live out on a piece of farmland. Whenever I borrowed his pickup truck, I'm thinking when I was a kid, I wanted to be a truck driver. And you just get a little higher up on the road. I, it's, I got to say, it, Chuck, it's a damn good feeling. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I remember Frank telling me about his son wanting a truck. And I know his kid is a very good baseball player and plays college baseball. I also think that's a baseball thing. I think it's a baseball thing to have the truck and obviously if you're a professional if you're a cardinal you have the nice souped up truck because as you and i know we used to be able to park underneath bush stadium in pre-covid years so you'd walk right past all of the players vehicles and don't you think it was about 50 50 50 percent really cool small sports cars and then the other 50 percent were massive trucks souped up with enormous wheels and just basically badass pickup trucks for all the uh, the country boys. My favorite thing to do is to walk along, and you can see where the vet clearly the veterans, so they're a little bit closer to the entrance. And you you might see a Lamborghini, maybe that's Molina's. You'd see a really nice Mercedes, could be Dexter or Ozuna in the past. Just like really really expensive and nice cars. And you just kind of keep going down the line, down the line, and then you'll see somebody's got like a Camry. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know right away, oh, that's the guy that just called up from Memphis. Or that's <laughs> – although every once in a while, the minor leagues – you know, Charlie did some scouting a couple of years ago up at Peoria. Mm -hmm. was watching Reyes pitch. I think Mosaic asked me to stop by. And Nick Plummer, remember the kid from Michigan, I think, draft pick? Yes. Uh, Cardinals draft pick a few years ago. Obviously got top dollar bonus money. So the players are leaving. And we parked in this little lot next to the field in Peoria. And the players were parked there, too. And at the end of the night, we were leaving to drive back to St. Louis. And you see all these guys, and they're piling in, like three, four guys. They're carpooling, young guys trying to make it in baseball. And then I see Nick Plummer walk out and hop in this just big, beautiful SUV. So every once in a while, the guys from the minors already are souped up. So this is, this is gratuitous car talk on Martin and Marla. People love this stuff, Charlie. People do. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Brad Strobinger, he'll love it. Brad Strickland, audience of one. By the way, you can subscribe. Apple, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your weekly, regular podcasts. Just make sure you subscribe. And Martin Marlowe will be delivered directly to you on Mondays of each week, unless Charlie's getting his truck fixed. Let's talk baseball. And it's kind of fun rolling into September that we do have a baseball season. And I know there are a ton of hurdles. And the Cardinals were probably, I mean, they were hit the hardest in terms of the coronavirus. And there was an argument to be made. Whitey Herzog said it early on. Just, just come back next year and do it right. And I think there is a real – there's a logic behind that. But selfishly, sitting here now, 
And looking at the standings and thinking about the playoffs, even though it's a totally bastardized season, bastardized system, I'm very grateful that we've got baseball games to turn on, things to watch and to talk about. And then lo and behold, Adam Wainwright gives us a great headline. If he had just pitched a complete game, it would have been notable because the team was in the tank, Cardinals homestand was unraveling. But then you combine the fact that it's his 39th birthday and Molina's in his 2000th game catching. It just, it had so many storylines and it's not just what we do for a living needing storylines. I think people around town, it gives you something else to talk about. And, I, I'm not always the most grateful, Charlie, or I don't always express positivity. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. noticed that. But I got to say, I'm excited just to see where this baseball season is headed. Even if the Cardinals, they, they don't even have to be great. Look at the standings. Four teams in the National League are over 500. Four. Eight teams are going to the postseason. So just sit back and enjoy it. I think this Cardinal, I think it's going to be hard not to make the postseason. <laughs> Hey, they might try. Who knows? You may try uh, not no. to. It's interesting because there's so many, there's so many interesting storylines, as you said. First of all, it's trade deadline day, where last year, I remember being astonished that the Cardinals did not get a pitcher. And I just couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. And, okay, maybe the asking price was, was too high. And I'm not even trying to necessarily go back and have that conversation again. But here we are, trade deadline day. Now I'd be more surprised if the Cardinals did something of substance. Now we know annually there's always the default reliever. Mo will always somehow pick up a reliever. Like that always happens. But with this team, I mean, we know they need offense, but they want to give all their outfielders opportunities. So I don't see them doing anything, anything big at this trade deadline. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I think this Cardinals team, they're not that great. They're not that bad. This year, who knows? The first round, if you get in, is best two of three. Literally, anything can happen there if you have a Jack Flaherty. And who knows? Maybe it's Adam Wainwright pitching in the, in the second game of that series right now. But yesterday, it was so cool to watch Waino. And then, I mean, the moment when he puts the masks on with Yachty and they hug. I mean, think about that, that picture years from now. And it's like, how weird will that be? Hopefully, we only have one year of wearing these masks. But that'll be one of those pictures for the ages that'll be interesting to describe to people that maybe were younger and didn't get it. Or, you know, 20 years from now, people that weren't around. And this is what happened in 2020. And they had to put the mask on to hug each other. But Adam Wainwright was so emotional in the post game with, with Danny Mack. I mean, he, he could barely talk. I mean, he was choked up the whole time talking about the fact that three years ago, his ERA was over five. We, we all thought he was done. Let's be real. We all thought Adam Wainwright was done. He even said that he maybe thought that was going to be the end of the line. The next year, I believe he started eight games and just couldn't stay healthy. And so for him, two or three years later, to have a sub three ERA, to be really helping this team in, in so many ways, not just the performances on the field, but coming back from the 17 days off, he took the ball. And he threw deep into the game when nobody else could or they didn't want anybody else to because they wanted guys like Flaherty to get back on a normal routine. He went out there, led the staff, gave them innings against the White Sox. Look at yesterday. You have a doubleheader. You have a long day for the bullpen. And Adam Wainwright says before the game, I'm throwing a CG. I'm throwing a minimum of 120 pitches. You guys have the day off. And then he did it on his birthday. He's 39. 2000th game for Yachty. Those two players, as we all know, will always be spoken about together. And then you had that amazing moment afterwards. It was really, really cool. Thank you, J.D. Drew. The famous J.D. Drew Drew trade that also brought uh, Ray King, one of our favorites. Burger King. The best in the bricks. It's more than just a slogan. Why not make your home or garage or chimney look its best by fixing the bricks? That's what B&G Tuck Pointing can do for you. Bricks look their best with proper tuck pointing. Call Rich Galati and his team at 314-363-0525. And by team, of course, we include his daughters, Bella and Gabrielle. Or go online, bgtuckpointing.com. A proud St. Louis-based company that supports the hometown St. Louis Blues. Yes, they love their hockey. Chimney repair, foundation repair, caulking, waterproofing. They do it all. 
Have you driven around St. Louis? We have a lot of brick buildings, and if they need repair, you know who to call. Consider me among the many satisfied customers. Call 363-0525, 363-0525, or go online, bgtuckpointing.com, and find out what it means to be the best in the bricks. You love sports? Sure. But what you really love is a winning team and a great story. That's exactly what you get with Appliance Discounters. It started with just three employees. One location, three employees. Denise Bradley, her husband John, her brother Tony. That's it. More than a decade ago. And for years, you've heard me talking about them. Here's why. My dishwasher, it's a Bosch. The quietest dishwasher on the market. Remember Grandma's dishwasher? Always... That's not what's going on with us. We got it at Appliance Discounters. Our washer, our dryer, our stove, and our refrigerator and Electrolux. Yes, the Kill Coins put these babies to the test. During the quarantine, the MVP at our house, the dishwasher, it got a workout. We've got big name brands we're talking about at a great price. St. Charles, Baldwin, Maplewood, South County, and in the city. The best bet, just get online. TheAppliancedischounters.com. Our savings are your savings. The Fountains and Flags outside invite you in. Once inside, it's obvious what makes Marie de Villa so special. It's the people that live there and the people that work there. I know for a fact it's a fun place to visit. Been there many times over the years for special events, and you can tell the residents love it as well. Welcoming atmosphere, providing all types of senior living, independent living, skilled nursing, memory care marie de villa senior living that's what we're talking about a single location that means ownership is hands-on the residents here are considered guests and trust me they feel that way the beautiful grounds make it more of a campus type atmosphere i love calling it the marie de villa campus located at the corner of clayton and weidman road i guarantee you've driven by there probably seen the fountains going red for october baseball blue when the blues are deep into a playoff run it's a family-owned facility It's been in business since 1960, and for so many years, it was home to the Cardinals legend, Red Shandings. I encourage you to take a virtual tour or simply to read more about this special place. Go to mariedevilla.com. But Wainwright did say it, and I like when athletes admit it. It wasn't a a made-up motivation like a pretend chip on their shoulder where, oh, the media says I'm done. He's now admitting, like, you know, I had to think that way, too. And how many pitchers can sort of reinvent at that point? And not coming out of the bullpen to get one or two guys, the crafty lefty, but to pitch a full nine innings. It's, it's remarkable what he's been able to do. And I think growing up, not only watching the Braves, but in the Braves system, I just think he's a smart player. We know that. But you think of the Maddox, Glavins. Those guys were great pitchers. But don't you think they were smart and, like, they figured it out? I, I just think that's a big part of – like Wainwright's game right now, I think his head is as big a part of his game as anything. Yeah, and Wainwright used to have really good velocity, especially when he first came up out of the bullpen, obviously, as a closer. But when he was in the running for Cy Youngs, and he was an absolute ace. I mean, he was still up there throwing 92, 93, and I think at times 94, and he could, he could dial it up if he needed to. So clearly he doesn't have that velocity anymore, but he, he's more of a pitcher now. I will say, I think the one thing with Wainwright is he still has an absolutely elite curveball. And I haven't looked at all of the different spin rate metrics and all that. But if you just watch him pitch and throw 100 pitches, you realize that that his curveball is still absolutely elite. And that's the reason that he can still go out there now and throw 89 with his fastball, but locate that. And he just, he knows how to pitch. Like, even when he's missing, I feel like he's missing on purpose. You know, that's fine. Go ahead. Like, there's, there's absolutely no concern. And it's funny because you start thinking about where, like, well, is Yachty coming back? What's happening next year? The Wainwright you're seeing, he is your two, I think. Other than, I mean, KK might end up being your two in a short playoff series. But Wainwright's one of your better pitchers you have and maybe one of the better starters right now in the National League. So it, I'm thinking beyond even this year, for him but don't you think the National League other than the Dodgers I mean the Cubs are better than the Cardinals but I don't think it's dramatically different I think the Dodgers the only question is how will LA not win this year sort of the annual trip up where do they fall short in the World Series in the NLCS because everybody else 
I mean, do you see any great distinction other than the Dodgers in the National League? The National League, I think the Padres have an unbelievable lineup, and they, they seem to be going for it. So whenever this podcast drops, this is before the trade deadline. They're already making some moves, and they pick up Trevor Rosenthal. They, they certainly need some pitching. I think they could use another starter. They're not, they're not elite from the pitching standpoint, but that lineup does not quit. So you could see some of those guys. I mean, Eric Hosmer right now is on fire. Trent Grisham, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. is arguably the best player in all of baseball. Manny Machado has been one of the hottest players in baseball the last several weeks. So they have a really good lineup. It would not surprise me if, if they got hot and they could use a bullpen-type situation. They have Drew Pomeranz. He's been really good. Rosie was really good with the Royals, and hopefully that continues there. Yeah, it, it does seem like this is the Dodgers' year. I want the Dodgers actually to win. I feel bad that they haven't won. You just wonder, will this be the year they win it after not winning since, since 88? And then will people kind of look at this World Series in a cheapened way because it was 2020 and it's this fluky 60-game regular season, this odd postseason? I don't know. I, I think it's going to be legit. But uh, in a, in a three-game series, we all know Clayton Kershaw has his postseason demons. If Clayton Kershaw starts game one of a best of three series and loses, I mean, just think about the momentum shift there. Don't you think a three game series, if you could roll out Wainwright, KK, and Flaherty, I mean, not in that order, but those three, I think you got a decent chance to win two games. Not being an ultimate homer, you may not hit enough. You may lose one and nothing, two to one. But in a, in a three game series, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with those three. Yeah, and that's where. There's not a lot of teams that have three legitimate aces that are going to go out there and absolutely you, – you basically sometimes lose the series just when you look at the pitching probables. Look, look at the Nationals last year. They were able to roll out a Scherzer, a Strasburg, Patrick Corbin. I mean, guys that can absolutely strike out ten dudes and go seven innings and, and, and you're going to get dominated. I just don't see that this year. Look at the White Sox. The White Sox have an amazing lineup. They have pretty good starting pitching with Giolito, with, uh, with Cease. And then, look, Dallas Keuchel's having a really good year. But what happened to Dallas Keuchel last year in the postseason against the Cardinals? He was very mediocre. So I think there's a lot of teams that are going to be rolling out the same caliber of, of pitching as the Cardinals. You know, not a lot of teams have a 1-1 a like Jack Flaherty. But even if you do, I think your, your two and three are going to be more like what the Cardinals have for most of these teams. I think, I think it's pretty – I think it's pretty uh, across the board um, fair in terms of – I don't know if fair is the right word, but I, I, th I think a lot of these teams are basically similar. I think having a, a Flaherty and a Wainwright and a KK, I think you're going to be able to compete against most of the teams in the National League. The Dodgers may be a different story in terms of the guys they'll run out there, but most of the teams you have a very good chance of winning, yes. Martin and Marlo presented by Marie de Villa Senior Living at the corner of Clayton and Wideman Road since 1960, premier senior living arrangements. Also, Triad Bank, the neighborhood friendly bank, started in 2005 right here in St. Louis. Find them on Clayton Road, about a block west of Lindbergh in Frontenac, real close to that intersection of Lindbergh and Highway 40, triadbanking.com. Appliance discounters, five area locations. Get online. Frigidaire, GE, Bosch, the best appliances at the lowest pricing. It's theappliancediscounters.com. And B&G Tuck Pointing, they are the best in the brick. So all those Marlowe properties, I don't know if any are brick, but if the chimney looks a little more in the exterior of the home, the garage, it needs mortar, Tuck Pointing, make sure you check in with the folks at B&G Tuck Pointing. And who's bringing us the Marlowe moments? Marla Moments, of course, Kirkwood Pizzeria, Kennelwood Pet Resorts, St. Louis Lawn Care, St. Louis Equipment, and then we have Corner Butcher, one of my favorite spots. I try to go there once a week, about, in Fenton, 2099 Bentley Plaza Drive, and I usually get a bunch of meat, and then I'll just kind of grill it for the whole week, and you'll be proud of me, Martin. My wife, basically, she kind of forced me to do this, which is good, because I don't cook enough or at all. But I got some stew meat from Corner Butcher. So yesterday, for the first time in a long time, it was a meal actually created by me where I went to the grocery store. I, I, first of all, I went 
to my phone and I Googled stew meat recipe and I got the recipe. And of course I had to ask my wife, what do we have? Cause I don't know all the different seasonings. And she said, we have that, we have that, go get this at this. I go to the grocery store and I cooked a fantastic stew. And it's because of corner butcher and their great stew meat. Now I put a lot of, I put a lot of, uh, love into that stew martin i should bring some in for you at work so you can taste how good this is because I, i'm i'm kind of proud of myself was it a crock pot or how was it like an all-day cooking it wasn't all day but you know we just threw it on the stove and started adding stuff you know we started with the stew meat and browned it and then we uh, started adding all the veggies and the seasonings and we let the uh the broth and the uh what, what do you call it we let it get happy it kind of marinates and all the meat and all the vegetables and all the juices the stock there. Is it called the stock when it kind of starts to take hold? Yeah, well, it was a lot of beef stock. But, you know, the first time I ate it, I have to say, it was a little hot. And I was like, okay, that's pretty good. And then I went back, of course. I mean, this is the first time I've ever had seconds. I never go back for seconds or thirds. But I'm telling you, it was better as it sat there, as it cooled off a little bit, as you stir it, and everything just, just comes together. It was better the second and third time around. Yeah, the guy delivers mattresses. He's making stew. What doesn't Chuck do? Let's do, uh, how about the COVID kudos? You know, I like the shout outs. And we mentioned this on the prep zone the other night on Fox 2. For all the athletic directors and talking to some of them that night, everything that goes into it, the coaches, just getting some of the parents into the stands. We're out in St. Charles, Lake St. Louis, and Wentzville. It's a lot of work just to pull these Friday nights off. And again, like I mentioned with the baseball, and I know it's sporadic. We don't have football, high school football in Illinois. Don't have it right now in the county or the city of St. Louis. But just to have a Friday night with lights on and kids running around and doing their best to be safe and smart about it. I mean, I was looking at the sideline, the, the Fox, uh, the entire varsity team on the sideline spread out. Instead of, you know, the word huddle, I think of football, right, where guys are huddled together, but they were spread out. So everybody doing their best so they can try and pull this off. Nobody knows how long it's going to last. but. God, it just felt good on a Friday night to have prep zone football. That was fun. It felt normal. I know all the teams aren't playing, and we feel bad for Illinois teams. Hopefully they'll play in the spring, and maybe we'll see St. Louis City and County here in a, in a few weeks or a month or so. But it, it, was, it was fun to see high school football. It, it, it returned us to a bit of normalcy. And uh, on a lighter note, as you know, Martin, when you cover high school sports, it doesn't matter – it doesn't matter. You try, we try to cover every team. We try to cover city, county, Illinois, Missouri, private school, public school, city, schools, county school. We always think about this. We do our best. Now, a lot of times, some of these schools in Jeffco, if we don't get to them as much, let's say, as a Chaminade or a CBC, or maybe St. Charles schools, this is your year, baby. This is your year. Jeffco and St. Chuck and Wentzville, you guys are going to be on display on the prep zone. So this is your year. This may be the year I don't do the TKO yelling at parents because every year we have to remind them it's not just about your kid. Every email, you never cover St. Charles. You never cover Illinois. You only care about the privates. How come you don't come to the public? It's like every year. This year, it's only like four games going on. We can't screw it up. Uh, also, COVID kudos to the folks over at Worldwide Technology Raceway. A double dip of racing Indy cars. you got two big names in the winner's circle, Scott Dixon, Joseph Newgarden. I have to be honest, if you were wagering on this, Joseph Newgarden, J-O-S-E-F, Newgarden, you would think what? He's from Germany, maybe Austria. Did you know this? He's from Tennessee. Yeah, he does have like that Russian, Joseph Newgarden. Uh, I, 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 feel I, like I, know, I was I reading his stats. I had no idea he's from Tennessee. I just look at that name. I didn't know where it was from, but I think your blink on that was like, oh, he was probably in Formula One and switched over. Right. And I should know this. I was off yesterday. So Saturday I was watching. I saw Scott Dixon, our guy Sato. I think our, I think our radio show actually started Sato's career because I'd never heard of the dude when we interviewed him about two, three years ago. And I feel like he's won every race since then. New Garden's the young kid, right? Like young, fun late, kid, right? Late twenties. Yeah, we've we've interviewed him before. Uh, just when he's been here for all the races, yeah, he seems like a a fun dude. Just the the name threw me off. Uh, COVID confusion, Charlie. Different topic, different segment. Uh, the Big Ten now talking about playing football, but maybe at Thanksgiving. 
what, what I never understood is when they came out with their schedule and they said, we'll play on September 5th, we'll start the season, you know, balls to the wall. And I thought, well, that doesn't give you any wiggle room. The SEC comes out and says, we'll start September 26th. Okay, so even if you have to bang the season or change things, you got some time. So it was about a week or two after they said, we're starting September 5th. And then it was, we're not playing at all. I, I don't really understand what's going on there. And I, I think if the SEC can pull it off in some form or fashion, the Big Ten and their, their ADs, their coaches, their fans, everyone's going to be pissed. That it's, Doesn't it look like they're scrambling right now to fix what may have been a mistake? 100% to quote our guy, Colton Draco. I, I never understood why they just banged the season like that when you seemingly had months to wait and see. Like, I'm not saying that college football is going to work. I have no idea. I, I'm more optimistic about it now than I was probably a month or two ago. But the fact that they just basically postponed, it was almost like they wanted to be the first league to do that. And I think, I think they look bad right now. And when the AD – or when the commissioner, Warren, comes out and basically says, oh, we didn't think people would, would react like this. Like, you didn't think in Big Ten country that people would be pissed if you didn't have Big Ten football at Ohio State and Penn State and Iowa and Wisconsin? I mean, are you, are you kidding me here? And, and that's where, e even when you hear about these meetings over the weekend, where, okay, maybe they're going to play week of Thanksgiving, I still don't understand. If, if you were saying, okay, I think we maybe messed up, let's see if we can play in the fall. You could go about six weeks from now, and you could play the second week of October. You could still play probably eight to ten games. I don't think anybody cares if the college football playoff gets moved three weeks or a month, as long as we have one. I, I don't understand. I, I, don't, I don't think that the Big Ten and the SEC are going to, you know, all of a sudden get together and say kumbaya. And if I'm the SEC, I would say, well, I'm not going to push our season back and wait for you when you're the one that, in, in our opinion, made a mistake in the first place. But to me, it would seem, it would seem kind of dumb if the SEC started in whenever it is late September and then a month or six weeks later, the Big Ten starts. I feel like you're close enough where they should be on the same page and, and come together. But at this point, I don't know if the Big Ten can do that. But, but six weeks from now, you're telling me that you couldn't prepare in six weeks to have a season? I feel like you could. Chuck, I believe this is episode 13, so this would be the mm -hmm. Kurt, Warner, Kurt Warner edition. That's the only number you need to know. Martin and Marlow delivered every week to you on Apple iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and, of course, just to make sure you subscribe and support the sponsors at all times. Chuck, great conversation. I'll be looking for you rolling down the road in that big old pickup. Beautiful, beautiful pickup truck. Chevy Silverado from Bomberito. Bomberito had a good weekend with the uh, the races. They're not a sponsor, but they probably should be. So if you're listening, another, another COVID kudos worked in. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. See you, man.